One of the most unique games out there is Rocket League. Rocket League is a football-based game that uses cars as the players. The car mechanics are simple, yet you can do complex stuff with it. My brother loves Rocket League, and he has over a couple thousand hours in it, so I'm planning on making Rocket League myself, and do a 1v1 against him at the end of the video. If you do enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Let's get on with it. While looking for a car model for the game, I found that I owned a low poly car pack. I do own a realistic car pack that has 4 or 5 cars, but the low poly car pack had a lot more vehicles that I could add later on. So with my car pack selected, it's time to add the car controller. The car can currently only drive around and not jump and flip, but the car is doing really well with controlling and making it feel a little bit more realistic to Rocket League, and my goal is to make it pretty accurate just to make it feel a little bit more fun. With more tweaking to the movement and the camera, I started working on boost, jumping, and all the flips in the air. It is far from perfect, however, for work in an hour, I feel like it did pretty well. Next, I was going to work on the pitch for the game. I tried modeling in Blender, but I failed terribly and I didn't get anything I wanted. So I had to go back to my man Brackies to learn how to do Pro Builder. I'm glad he's going off to do bigger, better things, but it's still sad to see him go. After hours of working on a map, I now have an amazing rink to play the game in. I totally didn't just look up an FBX model, export it, and there you go. And with that in the game, and some tweaking of the map itself, I now have a Rocket League looking game. Just a little disclaimer, this movement is not that great. It's, it's actually kind of bad, and I really dislike it, but I plan on making it better since most of it's run through script, so it's pretty easy to change if I even make more cars but we'll see if I change it later. I then started working on the ball for the game. It took a while trying to make the bouncing feel right, but since my camera's a little hard to see the ball while driving, it's okay for what it is. But since the camera is such a crucial part in Rocket League, I'm planning on making one similar to what they have as the ball following camera. I finally made the best camera ever. This camera grabs the midpoint between the car and the ball and rotates the camera around the car respectively. However, when you're near the ball, it does mess up a little bit, but you didn't know that. Next, I started working on the networking for the game. I'm somewhat nervous about expanding the game too much without having everything work on the network beforehand. So after a little while, I got a working server, create and join. However, I'm going to change that to a play button instead to automatically find you a match. But you can play on a room, drive around your car, and use your boost respectively. Now joining a server and having your car spawn works great, but the ball on the other hand is a whole nother issue. If you are the master client, hence the person who owns the ball, it works great and the ball collision is perfect. But if you're just a client on the server and not the server owner, then the ball collision does not work great at all. I did some research on digging into how to do a physics collision based system online but no one really has a solution for it, while well, using pun2 anyway. So I'll have to find a way to calculate the hit of alternate clients on the master client. If you have never done a server networking for a video game before, it's a lot of this. After a couple hours of headbanging and not understanding why nothing's working, I got a countdown working in the game. So the master client can start the game and it'll count down for everybody. And I also got player names above their heads. They will grow a little bit bigger whenever you go farther away, kind of like it does in real Rocket League, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Next, I wanted to work on the point system, aka scoring and resetting all the players' positions to restart the next round. Basically, I let the master client do all the calculations for who scores and who does what, but since the master client has all the control over the ball, it's pretty hard to make other players feel like it's fair. 
So with my rudimentary scoring and time system, I then started working on implementing the ball swapping mechanic to make it at least a little bit more smooth and a heck of a lot more reliable than what it was for when other players hit the ball. So the way I chose to fix my earlier problem where other clients can't hit the ball but the master client can is by swapping the ownership of the ball between every client. Basically, the master client will take all the player's positions, it'll calculate which one is closest to the ball and it'll tell that player to take control of the ball. It's not the best fix, but it's all I could think of, and I think it works pretty great in the implementation. After doing all this, I just wanted to do a quick stress test to see if the servers can actually hold up and spawn players in the correct positions. The car spawner script works about 80% of the time, the last 20% will spawn you on top of another car, which is kind of annoying and I think it's server sided why it's not working, because the players aren't in position yet, but we'll figure that out. I did rework the movement of the player a little bit and it feels a lot better than before. But now there's a new issue that whenever the ball swaps clients, it doesn't keep the momentum and it just resets. Let me tell you, this is infuriating. The more you know about Photon, the better you are off, but the thing is figuring most of this stuff out is not exactly easy to shorten hours worth of work. I found out there was a rigid body sync function on Photon and now the ball's perfect. After that, I added all the end screens for whoever wins, being orange, blue, or if it's a tie. I know Rocket League uses a overtime system, but I'm just going to make it a tie to make it easier. After finishing most of the game, I now started working on the main menu and car customization. You can customize your car, tires, and your name. With the main menu out the way, I completed the boost pads and the game is basically playable. But before that, I wanted to work on some game art for the loading screens and make the game feel more finished. After making a little bit of art for the game and some improvements, I challenged my brother to the 1v1. Now it's time for you to loot. When you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> this is actually kind of stressful. Because like, all going like really slow. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I missed the ball. What? I went right through the ball. Oh, you went right through it. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Here comes the save. Oh no. <laughs> no. 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 I can't lose like this. <laughs> no. Oh. No. <laughs> You hit it right into me. I know, I realize that. Don't score another goal on me. No! Exceptional idiot. Okay, let's see how it is. No, 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 I cannot! How do you have four points? You've only scored three goals! Oh, whoa, whoa, just... Well, you know what happened, Finn. Uh, the ball jumped out of the goal and I hit it again. Oh, no! <laughs> I can't. It's 4 0, not even code in this game! Come on! For creating this game in such a short time, the game actually runs pretty well. It is a little bit laggy for the internet connection, but that's also due to us having bad internet. After playing another game against my brother in Rocket Champions and losing, I retired from playing the game. 